go to YouTube. It should be up there now. We'll get we'll do a sound check with everybody too to make sure make sure it's good. Oh shit it is. It says all fine. It on YouTube? A starting? Yeah, yeah, well. I need to go turn the dose off. Yeah. Yeah, I might need to <laughs> turn turn the chain sink down. Yeah, we should be good. We'll validate that everybody can hear us here in a second. See if can. He's gonna have to add that. Want to get a sound check for everybody? Just make sure everybody can hear us. Good. Check and see. Should have some folks coming in. We'll give it a second. Let everybody get in. Get this over to the side. So the folks can see it. Let this thing get booted up. Let's get a good okay on the audio. Echoing. Machine echoing. Mic inputs. You had the audio being captured on the laptop. How are we looking now? Audio wise. Yeah, I'll let you look at that. Reverb slight echo. Yeah, that was from the input on the laptop rolling probably. We'll make sure. Oh God, your wife is texting me already. Ah, but she's like, where are you guys? And this is BBT. We may need to do one more of these uh, sticks because I don't think this stick is functioning. Make sure that they can hear us and then we'll get into it. They say it's good now? Awesome. Welcome back. Large build. We got most of it almost complete here. We had a few we were a few power supplies short. Still have not arrived. Christmas shipping and everything. So you try to plan one of these things and get everything in at the same time and sometimes it just doesn't come through. So we have most of the build done. We have 26 across the top. Another almost 20 on the bottom and then we got nine here with a whole bunch ready to go on deck. So 60 card build takes a little bit of time. And part of this, this live stream compared to the four hour one that we did before we did a cradle to grave build. I'm going to be going through some of the stuff that was lessons learned on this build. Each time you do a big rig like this, there's a lot of lessons learned. What are you looking at? You, you, you trusting this to wireless? Yeah, yeah, that wireless is the top top wireless there is bro it's mine bro yeah i don't know about your your <laughs> your rig here uh but there's a lot of different uh we're, we're broadcasting this right now across wireless so if we get a little uh shaky just let us know i'm gonna shut this thing down we're putting in simple mining right now on this build i'm gonna try to keep this going shut that down at least these nine cards we got we got two power supplies on the back of this rig so we're doing we're gonna do it just with nine right now on this we could put a few more this has got a thousand watt g3 and we'll get into that piece here in a second but big thing I want to go through today with everybody and give you guys all obviously a question and answer uh, session to answer some of the questions on some big this big build is to talk through the complexities of when you're doing something at scale like this especially if you're doing AMD um any of these mining rig setups if you're going to use amd and i'm just going to get straight to the chase on it you can pretty much factor in about a 60 to 70 percent increase in the time to set it up and that's very predicated on the fact that you have to do a bios and it's not just one bios even when you have this many cards are the same thing there's chances that you're going to get different versions uh, revisions of the card there's chances that you're going to get different memory on the cards which each are a different bios 
And in that, there's also within the BIOS, you have the quality of the card that you get and you may get some variance in that. So one card works with certain clocks, another card will not. So a lot of the time isn't just the physical setup of the activity that we're talking about here. It is the fact that you got to set up the card, see which ones work with certain settings, and then kind of go through a process of elimination to find the cards that are less suitable for the clocks that you're sending to it and that. All of this, by and large, is mainly predicated on AMD only. Um, a lot of the NVIDIA cards, which are a higher cost, are pretty much you put them in the box, you're out of the box, you plug them in, short of the 1063 gigs that have the Hynix memory, most of all of the rest of the 1060s, 1070s, 1080 Ti's, 1080s from NVIDIA is essentially you take it out of the box, you plug it in, you set some settings on it and you go. And you're pretty much out of the gate. So if you're looking why you pay a premium on NVIDIA, part of that is the, rat, the reason for that. Um, a lot of people in mining have discovered that. Um, we've shown it several times on several different builds that that's the thing. But the price per performance that you get for AMD still makes it alluring you know, so if you're building a farm going with an AMD product because you can usually save a lot more and you get a lot more out of that cost after you've done the due diligence on the BIOS and the setups. So just full disclosure on building, if you're wondering like, hey, why aren't you guys all the way done? Part of that's going through that iterative process of setting up the cards, seeing which ones play with the right settings, finding the good sets of BIOSes for them and setting up the, the cards where they won't fault out or have memory errors and cause you hell. So, that's a lot of the, the kind of pieces on this. I don't, did you actually, did you guys actually build this? Because these are not posting. Did you, on the uh, memory stick? That came from my running over here. Um, yeah, it's not, it's not posting for that. So we'll get through that. So we're, we're still getting one of the rigs set up. We're just set simple mining on one of the memory sticks. So I was just checking to see if we had um, it actually set up that way. So I'm going to, restart this and see if we have to re-image this uh, memory stick but we're going to get in take the camera around answer some questions we'll show you guys how we have this all set up and then i'll walk through some of the uh the steps that we had to go through with putting in the different bioses on it and some of the troubleshooting mechanisms that we use with regards to like identifying things marking them that's why i got a green marker on my finger or on my hand here um let's get into the bios here make sure we're set up correctly here um and we'll take you through that because that there is some very meticulous steps on that. They got in, what are we up to? We got some folks in. 69. 69. Quiet night. Let's see here. Secure boot, legacy only. Boot option one is that sand disc. Top load's getting hot. Did you crack the door? Add some cool air into here. Making sure we're set up right on the BIOS. You guys can ask some questions while I'm configuring this and we can get into some other stuff. Outside. It is cold down here. I think what is it like, like 15 degrees, 14 degrees right now. Yeah. We have access to the door outside, in the back. So it is uh, does allow some nice cool air into here as these start to get warm. We're gonna be looking at some ventilation options in this because this this many cards it's gonna heat up an area really quick. These top cards are going to get baked a lot faster than the bottom ones, obviously, because as the heat goes up. So getting some airflow here. We haven't put any of the fans or anything in place right now. Right now, we're just trying to get everything configured, make it run optimally. This thing is still not uh, posting with this. With simple mining on this memory stick. Switch out the USBs, make sure we can see it. 
Sometimes on simple mining, when you plug it into certain USBs, sometimes you won't get any response. I usually flip it around first before I have to go rebuild it again and see if I can get it to post. On this build right here, we have nine cards plugged in right now. Those are already have the BIOSes on them. Let's see if we can get simple mining to pop up here. That's a normal process with simple mining, kind of flashing that piece right there. I said uh, we're doing ETH right now. We're going to switch to dual mining when it all gets up and running. And somebody asked if you could explain what dual mining is. Yeah, so there we go. So you saw it wasn't booting on that first memory uh, or that first USB. I just moved it over underneath the. Uh, the ethernet connection, most of the time that's a, I don't know why it's a difference, but it is a difference whenever you plug that in there, now it's seeing it. Um, with regards to dual mining, and that's the other advantage of AMD too. Some people are like, why would you ever go with AMD with all the trouble and all the stuff that you have to do to try to get them running efficiently? Um, one, of their, one of their good abilities is dual mining. So what the dual mining in essence is, is on every clock cycle on that GPU, you have so many clock cycles that are heading for at least the core clock cycle that goes to Ethereum, but most of the Ethereum overhead is on the memory, on the memory controller and on the memory on the graphics card. So it leaves a lot of open cycles, open threads for another process essentially. So what Claymore and a few of the other vendors have done, what we got like stuff out there in back? Wildlife. Wildlife in the back. Keep it open. <laughs> Keep it open. See the bunnies. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm getting these guys give me like vocal cues. Like we live in the Midwest, so like we could have like a, a coyote in the back that sees this heat and comes running in here. Now that would be one hell of a viral video <laughs> if we had some random coyote come up in here. Car gets but, attacked by a coyote. Attacked by, that may be really cool. <laughs> but yeah, just. I'm, I'm looking at them and I'm seeing an open door, so I'm just making sure. That, uh, let's get back to this. So on on each of the AMD for the AMD card, when it the way AMD handles the processing, there are open cycles. At the end of the day, there's open cycles that are available. So Claymore and a few of the other miner, mostly Claymore, found a way to include in those open cycles that it has to include another very process heavy algorithms such as uh there's decred there's sia coin there's library credits and there's pascal coin those coins can work in those off cycles uh, can work in those open threads during each cycle so essentially if you look at it like ethereum is using one process with the full memory and there's four processes left in that single cycle the other four are being completed by that other algorithm so essentially you can dual mine at the same time during each clock cycle you're essentially mining two coins so it actually maximizes the card this is why it uses more power because it's actually threading out the actual gpu it's taking it to its max essentially so you're getting the most efficiency out of the gpu when you're dual mining however there's a few considerations one you're using a lot more power you're really maxing out the card so you have to make sure you're prop properly powering it. In addition, you have to make sure that the supporting riser is set up in the correct way. Six pin, single thread. The way we got these with three PSUs, almost each GPU is on its own single strand. So that gives us the ability to do it. He's got laughing. It's real hard to do this with if other people sometimes. If a came in, I'd hold as well. It, <laughs> I'd hold as well. It, it wouldn't hurt me like Bitcoin did today. Ah, uh, don't worry. Bitcoin, there's ups and downs. If you got right now, it's 13k, it's 12k, 12.5, whatever it is right now. This happens in cryptocurrency. I would say if nothing's changed mechanically in the way everything works. So if there's a big dip in a system like this, and I know I'm kind of going left field real quick on this, but I want to hit. The, I wanted to hit this point today. When you have a big di dip in any of these cryptocurrencies, nothing in the underlying technology has changed, right? The same use cases, the same principles that really drove the value is still there. When you put big market players, wells, people that can drive down price, try to get cheap Bitcoin, wells are going to play, right? So I would say if you still, I mean, we believe in it heavily. The technology hasn't changed. Nothing on the underlying principles has changed. There may be other regulation. There may be other people worrying about how they're going to handle taxes. There may be other countries coming out and saying how they're going to handle things. All that being said is adoption. That's actually a good thing. Adoption, regulation, how to pay taxes, all these kind of things starting to really get fine, you know, set up.
for people to understand is all good stuff. People are like, oh, it's a you know, huge libertarian movement. You can still move currency right now. There's nothing changed in that, right? So the fact that you can have adoption and the mechanisms to get in place for more adoption is a good thing. The people to compete with Coinbase, if Poloniex, I've seen some of the news about Poloniex about requiring more information. Guys, at the end of the day, that's just gonna allow more people that are on the sidelines waiting for more regulation because they have huge investments or they have huge capital, they wanna invest in the space. They're gonna want the infrastructure to be in place that makes sense, that it doesn't look like a fly-by-night thing. So the people with the real, real large capital that comes into this space needs that, that structure to fit the model, right? And that structure is going to be put in place. That's not still going to change any of the, the, the free movement of empowering what this does from a, from a structural standpoint, from a society standpoint, from an evolutionary standpoint, the way money works. None of that changes. It still happens. There still doesn't change anybody that's living in a third world country if you're in you know indochina through nicaragua or any of these other places that are out there these people still can use this money right and still use the the facets that are there nothing's changed with that big structures big institutions allowing that infrastructure to allow people that are banked that have lots of capital to get into the space is good for the space especially for anybody that has it so the only thing I would say, I'm not a financial advisor, but I'm just looking at the way the math and the way things look out. If you allow structure for people to get into the space that have money and do only trust the institutions, that's not a bad space for people that are already in it and already have vested interest in it. So I say hold through it. I say this is a good buying dip time. You got the North American Bitcoin conference coming out in the the end of towards the end of January, January 17th. We're going to be there talking to people, explaining from the mining side of it why the grassroots piece of mining and anybody that can contribute and be a part of this space is big, right? And why and the individuality that has that that has the separation of the decentralization for anybody can be part of that. We will be pushing really that kind of content of letting people know that the that's a big thing. It's good that people that can put one rig together and two cards can participate. Can participate not through just buying. They can actually be a producer. And that's a big thing. So that's going to be us doing it. You look at that infrastructure in place, I think that's a very big. So I wouldn't freak out about it. Nothing's changing with it. We got Shout out to BM Christensen. says, thanks for what all the mining things you did in 2017 degrees from Norway. 50 clones. 50 crone spot from Norway. BM Christians. Yeah, BBT Brett. That's that's your next. That's that's the, that's the my DNA. That's in your DNA, bro. The the Swedish Norway area. No, that's it, good. Thanks, bud. We we do appreciate it for everything. We try to bring this stuff to you guys. <laughs> I want to make sure that you guys understand. You know, a lot of people are like really get concerned if we show like big rigs and they feel like they are like, oh, how can I compete with that? Individual couple cards at a time allow you guys to get into this space. Well, it's going to be hard to compete with the bigger network. The It's the same kind of scale as like Bitcoin. Unless you're going to drop a lot of money into mining to get the, you know, tons of ant miners and stuff, it's hard to compete in that space. You're just going to get little scraps of currency from that. A two card rig setup can mine electronium, can mine uh, Ubik, can mine a lot of these other currencies that are platform based, that have purpose, that people can deploy dApps to. And if those dApps get some, some, uh, usage out there look at I mean I don't want to use crypto kitties but just anybody that can build a dap and deploys it to a network maybe go with a, lo a lower cost alternative such as Ubik or Expanse or any of these other networks you're gonna have a two card rig and get into that space mine and actually get full units with a couple cards right and then just keep monitoring the space and then if that space ha happens to get some level of growth then you know that was worth your time for doing it, right? And allows you to get in there, get used to making transactions, get used to storing wallets, getting used to make exchanges with people. And you're starting small and it was from your production. It wasn't from you having to draw, drop, you know, more cash on a currency that you could create it. So that's part of the mining piece too. So, all right, so let's get into this. We have uh, the nine card ring. It looks like this is going on. It looks like you configured it. So the 918, that's, uh, did you set the settings? On. No, I need, I need to. All right, so I'm gonna I'm gonna kill this. Bottom one. left. 
It's uh, mid. Mid left. Can you give it a name? I'm shutting it down right now because I want to... The, so the one thing I'm going to tell you guys, so first kind of, let's get into if we're, if we're having timestamps produced. That was kind of set up. A little shout out of using AMD, and I will get into probably that one more time to explain it between the NVIDIA and AMD, but from a configuration standpoint, if you have an ASUS B250 Mining Expert motherboard and you're going to run 13 cards, first pro tip that I would say is do not use the 16x slot. I've noticed, at least with simple mining, that that slot mines a little slower than the rest of them. I move that, and we just had this one just briefly set up. I'm moving the, one of the risers over to one of the other slots and getting it out of the 16x slot. On that, when we had it booted up, the one card was doing 16. The rest of them are doing 25 out of the gate. They just have timings only on them. We are going to now overclock them and set them up to where they'll be running about 27 and a half. I'm rebooting it right now. That's the middle. We, we named each of the rigs on Simple Mining, and maybe we'll get a chance to show you guys the screenshots of Simple Mining. We are making a separate episode that's more tactical on this, um, so you will get to see some screens. But this is the kind of setup here I'm showing. I'm not using the 16X, and then we just kind of got the rest of them spread out um, right now across all the different lanes. Uh, on this particular build, all the 13 cards, it's essentially everything working left to right minus the 16X slot uh, for the folks that are using the B250. So we'll get this up. Looking at power requirements, it looks we could we can put these at 2060 memory, and they get about 29 and a half, almost 30 mega hash. But we're using a lot more power. We found the good power rate and consistency without throwing memory errors was about 1900 on the memory, not 2060 or 2000. It's there a handful of cards work at 2000, a handful don't. It's just the the real smooth consistency is about 27 and a half mega hash for each. And we're also running at about 110 watts, a little lower, 100, 108 watts per card running like that versus 125, 127 watts per card. So now we will bump up to about 130 watts if we're dual mining, 128, somewhere around there, um, which would, for that extra 20 watts per card, you have 13 cards per rig, right? So that's 220, 260 extra watts on the power supply requirements. Um, to dual mine is actually worth it, but you got to make sure that you have the right configuration set up on the way you got your power distributed. That way you don't burn up any power supplies. Or any risers. This is, oh, you did the, the clocks because it just rebooted again. So right now we're setting this one up. You'll see this. They were, they'll run about 27 and a half. Uh, we, I told you guys that I would get these BIOSes for these pulses out to you guys. We're going to be putting a couple different BIOSes out there. The two that we found to work were a handful of the BIOSes, or a handful of the one BIOS did not work on some of the cards, and we got a second BIOS that's a little less aggressive, but around the same rate of performance. So, but it works on it. And these do not say that they're two different revisions, like revision one and revision two, but there's a distinct difference on some of these cards to where one BIOS works very well, some other BIOS doesn't. And it could be the different bins when when processors are, when, when memory is produced, they do it like any other cycle in supply chain. So it may be two weeks, they have a certain set of silicone that comes out, gets stamped, gets pressed, and that's part of certain bins with a date timestamp. Then new material comes in and they'll make another series maybe two weeks later and that'll be a different bin number. Well, that may have, may have been sourced from a different place and just the manufacturing process has a little difference because now you have a different template that's made and that little slight change will make a, just a micro difference on when you're trying to modify certain things so that's why some chips that say they're samsung and you go and run it's not it's not they're not all equal right you get that that kind of silicone lottery thing so when you're dealing at scale like this you're going to get situations where you're going to have to have multiple bioses again this is only amd NVIDIA, different story. You don't have to mod the BIOSes. So, what do you think about the P104s having even 4 gigs of RAM in the 106 and The P104, I haven't seen the P104. We're trying to re request out. I thought some of the P104s have 8 gigs. Were they saying they only had 4 gigs? That's some of them? Vandal, you know, says they have I, 4. I haven't seen, and we, we, we put a request out for some. Uh, it, it, it's neutral. I mean, Four gigs is fine. The Ethereum DAG file is only at 2.25 gig. It's not on pace right now. The original schedule, if Ethereum kept 
it's 15 second block time this whole time the schedule was november of 2018 is when it would breach three gigs the dag file why that matters for anybody that's not tracking anything the 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 dag file is essentially a big memory data set that gets loaded into the graphics memory on a, on a gpu once the dag file reach oh you know goes over the three gig limit then the three gig cards will no longer no longer work so all the 1060 uh the gtx 1060 is at three gig on the old schedule would have been obsolete at least for ethereum mining just ethereum by november of 2018 based on the DAG growth. And you can kind of calculate that based on block time and just when the epoch levels go up. So at the end of the day, with Ethereum having Ice Age, which started in May and went through October, it slowed the block times down, thereby slowing out that entire process some. So it actually caused a, uh, a delay in that. So right now the forecast is more like July, a January, February time frame of 2019 were three gigs. So why I said it was really kind of irrelevant on um, the four gig cards is that we're talking not until 2021 if Ethereum isn't proof of stake by then. You're getting some lag? No. Oh. Is it yellow? Yeah, you're yellow. Okay. Yeah, we're trying to fix the stream. We're going to go hard line. Somebody's inviting has invited you to their farm in Miami. Their farm in Miami? There you go. Hey, we're gonna be down there. We're actually gonna have a couple extra days. Maybe we might have to stop by. They're uh so bottom line, people that are were concerned about the four gig, you, you, that's uh from an aging standpoint of mining, if Ethereum postpones proof of stake further out, they would uh, they would have to postpone it all the way to twenty twenty one for it to really be an issue from a DAG file size. So I think you're still fine on the four gig cards. Part of the whole argument on the four gigs versus eight gigs usually were more predicated on the fact of if you were reselling your equipment, what would gamers want to buy? And if you're talking P104s, that's not a gaming card. That is a true mining card. So I think the four gigs would be fine. Six gigs kind of irrelevant. Essentially the six gigs when they were coming out with the P10, P106s, was around the fact that they were GTX 1060s that they were re reusing the PCB a lot of the architecture there which already had six gigs of DDR5 so um, four gigs should be fine but we'll we'll take a look and see what the David the P104s have has one and they're eight gig yeah so I know when we were reaching out the 104s at least the initial spec sheet that we saw they were eight gigs so they might be making four gigs uh, on the p106s they made the p106 90 and the p106 100s 100s are the ones that were pretty much covered in all the process and stuff the 100s had uh are the 100s were the six gig cards and the 90s were the three gig cards that was a way to really kind of check and find out which ones you had so the p104s may come in as separate like p104 dash and then whatever their subcode is that subcode's probably the four gig versus eight gig. But uh, until we get one, I mean, I'm reaching out to try to find one. We've went through all the express. We don't have any direct vendors, guys. Again, we don't we don't get anything for free on any of this stuff. When we go out and purchase, just like you guys do on the big bulk purchases, if we can't get it through like an Amazon or something, we're reaching out to like MA Labs, which is out of Chicago. So since we're in the U.S., so we're out there trying to just buy them, just like anybody else is. There are no advantages. We've always told you guys that. So it's you know, and I've seen other YouTubers talk about having deals with like Newegg and finding out, you know, when certain cards come in and all that kind of stuff. I don't have any of those relationships like that. Now, not to say that there's certain people who haven't tried to reach out to create some of those relationships, but it's just unless I want to deal with with the corporate level, executive level, to make sure that we would have be able to establish a, a partnership to be able to get cards if we ever wanted to go at scale and then start being producers for other people right now this has just been more of a us educating the community through our experiences and since i've been in the space since about 2012 heavily on the mining we made the channel in 2013. so this was more just of here come along with us we're in here building anyways and then really bringing you guys into education. We have never really pivoted the business into where I need to establish those big relationships. So that was that kind of part and parcel of like, do I really need to 
or do I just continue to do what we're doing right now and just making sure that you guys know how to do it. So we're looking in 2018 how we may pivot that business to maybe, since there's a lot of interest in the mining space, and maybe adding in a, a part of the business that helps large institution, large people that want to build mining farms or get into bigger deals uh, and maybe expand that, you know, here we'll, we'll provide some of that. Um, in addition to trying to get the rest of that, we've been working this build for the last couple days, so I have not deployed the mining resource mining database. That is my plan before I get back to the normal day-to-day uh, -day grind. And right now I'm gonna put a forecast out there by January 6th to have at least the initial uh, mining database out there for everybody, which is just that how-to's, quick reference guides, really kind of giving you guys a, a lead into it. What do you guys get wrong? I do want to set the dust off your ass. I got, I got stuff on my butt. Thanks. I'm, uh, getting, I'm getting pointers from the wife on watching the, oh, watching the feed. Live on remote. Live block on catcher, remote. Uh, tip you 50 euro, no comments. Well, bl block catcher? Yeah. Well, buddy, well, I mean, you got any questions? We'll help you answer them. Let us know. Anybody that does any kind of super chats, I always, uh, you, we make sure that you guys, if you guys have questions or anything, email us at bitsbetrippin at gmail.com if you run into any questions or any of that kind of stuff. We'll make sure that you guys have that information. We do value that, that those commitments that you guys make with, with sending us, you know, uh, super chats and stuff like that. We want to make sure you're getting your, your, your value added. So if you're getting that through the normal communication, thank you. On behalf thanks, of everybody that sees that. Thanks for the valuable information. Keep on, keep on following 2018. Nah, 2018 is going to be an amazing year for the crypto space in general. So a lot of, uh, you know, it's prime time. Last three months have been prime time. That's been folks getting educated and understood. A lot of FUD, a lot of different misinformation. And crypto is running a lot faster than even the media, news media cycle. This stuff happens very quickly. So... We're not like your your news, you know. There's a lot of great channels out there for that kind of stuff um, that I I review. Like any of you guys, we do a lot of research ourselves. Our main focus is making sure that you guys have your resources when it comes to building mining. What do cards do? We got a ton of new content coming out with new cards. I got more stuff coming out um, with different types of cards. We're obviously going to be try to be one of the first on Volta. We were first on, actually I think the first on YouTube with the the mining car, the, or the uh, NVIDIA Titan V. I think I had the first YouTube video out there for that. I wanted, to, we paid for first overnight. I wanted to be the first one out there actually talking about it with it physically in hand. Um, you know, Gamers Nexus did a, 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 did a solid one. You know, we sent our version of our Titan V to them. They did a whole bunch of uh, side-by-side -side comparisons with their Titan V and stuff. So when Volta comes off with that architecture, we cannot wait to bring it to you first. The uh, a lot of, I know there's probably a lot of questions with the Volta and the architecture there too. And I would just hold off on the reservations on making predictions of what it is. I've seen a lot of people come out and say GDDR, GDDR5 or GDDR6 and HBM2 and they're putting all these like forecasts based on theoretics. Until I get it in hand, we will then talk through it. There's a high chance that it's gonna be significantly better and better performance per watt compared to the re the current architecture but until we get in a hand who knows if they're going to throttle certain uh retail cards and really push people to um mining type of cards nobody knows what the, the industry is going to do i would have a great feeling that if the volta architecture is what it looks like in the titan v it could be almost as twice as good as a 1070 and if nvidia knows that you bet your bottom dollar that they're not going to try to make sure every Volta is picked up by mining folks. So there could be some some adjustments that they make to make sure that they're throttling it. And since that, that BIOS is locked, they're going to try to protect their core audience. And I understand that. So hopefully NVIDIA and the corporate execs that maintain the architecture and that kind of stuff pivot and give us an, op an option on Volta and let us really relinquish what Volta and that tech can do in the next six, 10 months. Um, I'm just concerned that they'll pivot it and make sure that all the mining folks doesn't just completely take all of them. Um, or they just build a lot, a, a lot of them for everybody. Got $20 from Five Rings Promotions. Oh, like a boss. Thank you, say thank you. Yeah, no, I say thank you, yeah. <laughs> no, I, I like, anybody that does that kind of contribution, we do thank you guys for doing that. Our Norwegian friend asked uh, 
asked you to talk about the safe temperatures for GPU. So we set, we set in simple mining, if we're mining with simple mining, a max temperature of 85. We don't want them ever going over 85. Um, most of the time we try to keep everything no, no more than 80, if at all possible. It's just from a, from a long-term uh, maintaining of the, the GPU, keeping them constantly at 80, 24 seven, just over time I've seen GPUs, fans go out because you have to run the fans higher. So trying to keep them under 80 in general, 77, 78, that happens, that's fine. Depending which GPU you get, some, some cool a lot better. Like these ones right now with the door not pulling in, uh, in temps, we got what, where it's 45, 40 Celsius, 58 Celsius, 47 Celsius. That's the middle, this is the middle one, right? Top left's running at 82. Yeah, but we're getting, we're getting some drops here on yeah. these ones. That's why they're not running as hard. Uh, because this, these are the ones that we just, we just updated. Yeah. So we'll, we'll, we'll go back into the, on these. Here, I'll let you, if you want. Nick, you can. Yeah. Um, let's put this back on here. Let's get it back on Windows. This one here. Yeah, and we'll shut this down. And then when we get it back on Windows, we'll, we'll drop the, the other BIOS type on it. And we'll get that. So, so temperatures, anything under 80 is really what your target is. So certain GPUs, and I'll bring a, this one GPU over closer. So, the GPUs that have the back plate on them, the main reason for the back plate with the, the actual thermal is the VRMs, the voltage regulation modules, are on the back. That's really what controls the voltage on there. You'll notice a pretty significant cooling advantage, usually with the cards with the back plates, mainly because it takes those VRMs and spreads that heat out and helps you to be able to cool that surface down. Um, cards with the back plates usually cool a lot better. You get cards that don't have the back plates that actually usually heat up, like, uh, like the 570 Strix. For some reason, a Asus didn't put like back plates on those. Those things will, will blast straight to 85 if you don't have them cooled right. If you don't have an external cooling uh, mechanism, like a box fan or something that keeps them cool. So I always, I've always done a best practice that I don't like to spin these any faster than 50%. 50% or lower, just to keep the longevity of these fans. It's a lot cheaper for me to replace a box fan or another, you know, a $20 box fan you can buy on, you know, your local store. Use that to help cool or create a different, there's tons of awesome innovation that's came from the mining space from the community when it comes to boxing your rigs up. I think two two ton hasher has those. I think it's two ton hasher has those down in Florida. He has them in a box. He has a a uh, a filter on the side. It has a fan pulling the heat out out of it and create that ventilation to properly cool them. There's different cooling opportunities there. We got Jack tip five dollars for the chicken dance. For the chicken dance. <laughs> I'm not dancing for five dollars. <laughs> good try. Good try. <laughs> Maybe put two zeros behind that jack and I'll dance like a crazy person. I'm not that cheap. I'm not that cheap of a date. Um, so hopefully that answered it. Eight, you know, no more than 80. And it, control it with external fans. Uh, you know, bring in, create circulation, move the air across the cards. That that should keep you in good some good order. And that also helps you on a lot of hash rates. So people send me messages and they're talking about crazy hash rates or it's really up and down first question that i usually ask them is what's your temps because the cards will temperature throttle they will try to protect themselves if it blasts past 85 celsius so add a fan to them put it on high lay it on top of your rig if you have to just move air across them what's it what he said somebody said time for the chicken dance bidding war the <laughs> time for the chicken dance bidding war there you go i got five on it <laughs> there you go so we get that one plugged in. This one. Yeah. So we're gonna plug. We're gonna plug this. We're gonna we're gonna get into a little bit of moving this rig, progressing this rig a little. I'm gonna open this up because it is getting a little warmer here. James Tyler sent over two bucks. So thanks for all the great info. No problem, James. And if you guys haven't tried, I mean, so if you can't, if you're in a pickle, like you're just like building your rig and you're like table flipping moment. Take a pause. 
go to bitsbetrippin.com, click on the Discord channel, and go in there. There is a thousand plus members in that community. There are a ton of people that help each other out. And it's one of those kind of pay it forward things. If you're running into an issue and you just cannot figure it out, you've done research, go to the Discord channel. That's what that's for. That's like live, that's like a, a community live, I wouldn't want to call it tech support because I don't want to set anybody up like that, but it's, it. if you just say, hey, here's what I've tried, you know, I would say start your communication with that of, how's it going? I have these type of equipment. Here's the issue I'm running into, and here's a few things that I've tried, right? Name your equipment, name you know your settings, your temps, that kind of stuff, and name what you've kind of already done, which kind of sets people up. And I guarantee you, if you came with that kind of information into one of those tech channels on uh, the Discord channel, somebody there has probably either experienced it, or they figured out how to fix it, or they can kind of help direct you to a, if we're not on there, to help you to direct you to the spot. That's the point of that Discord was to create a community that took care of each other. Because we're all in this together, right? I mean, in the beginning of mining in 2013, people were like, oh, don't talk about mining at all. It's about, you know, let me let me get all the coins. Let me, let's keep the hash rate down. Absolutely not. The basic macroeconomics on that is, is if you have more than an imaginable amount of people being producers, you're going to have one-to-many connections on people that are going to be like, nah, I'm not going to do that, but I'll buy some. How do we get to the Discord channel? So if you go on to bitsbetrippin.io, you'll see the menu at the top. There's a Discord link right there. You click that, it'll invite you. You accept the invite. You give yourself a name. You'll get accepted. And there's a few steps when you first come into the first channel to kind of you'll set an avatar up, just a picture for yourself. And then you'll get accepted into all the other channels in there. There's a troubleshooting channel there. There's a general channel. You can talk in there that way. So bitsbrichippin.io, then the Discord. David J would like to take a closer look at the PDU breakdown. What yeah, we'll, we'll bring the camera is. over here in a second here. We're chilling this out right now. Uh, I'll bring the camera over in a second here. Well, I'm going to get this one going here. And then we'll do a... Uh, we'll take you guys around it. And I'll, I'll get in there, we'll go all night vision on the camera if we need to and let you guys kind of see the setup and structure here. As you can see, the configuration that we're going to be rolling here right now is essentially we have five rigs with the ability to expand to a sixth one on this rack. And we got we got one here, two and three, and then four and five with the, the sixth spot over here being open. Cards across this, the top, so you're looking at roughly 20 or the 26 cards across each row. Giving you a total of almost 65 cards, or 66 cards, or 69 cards, right? That's the total on that uh, absolute max if we were to go through there. That's 69 cards. 60, well, we're doing 65, but I'm saying you could put 69 because it's essentially 23 per row. So, uh, yeah, a 69 on these total racks, or on these three racks here, or, you know, well, four racks essentially, um, is the setup that we got. And then we got two 30 amp connections coming on the back wall into two uh, trip light PDUs, which are power distribution units. It's, it's taking that 240 uh, connection and allowing us to split that essentially to, what are we doing on nine, let's see, six, 12, 12 PSUs, essentially. ROI? ROI on this was, well, I mean, ROI is very predicated on pricing of the current currency, but at current pricing, $750 to $800 ETH prices, you're looking at about three and a half, possibly up to four months on something like this. Uh, it's about twenty-three and a half, twenty-five thousand dollars $25,000 for this whole kind of setup here. Because you got essentially 65 GPUs in total, um, 12 power supplies, uh, five motherboards, the B250 ASUS uh, motherboards, Risers, um, if, if you order risers from uh, like AliExpress vendor, you can save a lot on risers. Um, typical risers from Amazon and that will cost you five or cost you ten dollars uh, per riser. If you go through something like AliExpress, order a hundred, you want to order them in bulk, you can get them down with shipping to about five or six bucks. So you can save about three dollars per riser doing that. You can get some vendors that'll go a little cheaper, go all the way down to four dollars a riser. If you buy them in bulks of a hundred, so it depends on what you're what you're doing. Um, 
with your setup but you know as we always give you guys we give you guys straight cost and all that kind of stuff um and then it all comes down to your gpu cost you know what types of gpus you're going to get on your roi so that's why going with like an amd is a much cheaper alternative if you can find them for the 250 to 290 range in price and get close to 30 mega hash you know 27 and a half to 30 mega hash per card and if you're gonna dual mine you know you're looking at that there's a little more cost with this one because we went with three power supplies we were doing the 3850 p2s into the b250 motherboard because it can handle three psus and that gives a good even distribution of power across the 13 cards per rig so and besides the last uh power supply there we got uh, ran out of p2 uh 850s and had to go with a 1000 g3 um which has a little more cost it's about 200 bucks for that power supply right now versus about 160 170 for the other power supplies um so you look at the total cost there about 25 cost about four months at current price if ethereum goes up 2018 i think is going to be a very interesting year in crypto if the if the facilities regulation taxes all this stuff falls into place for multiple countries this just isn't a u.s thing you're going to see potentially a lot of money come into the space across a lot of different currencies is that going to is the sea going to rise all boats on that very likely from a, just a macroeconomic side again i'm not your financial advisor i'm just looking at the numbers the the presence of media the presence of people investing into the space in general and seeing what that could lift to if i if it ends up being a 900 to a 1500 dollars ethereum price in three months this kind of setup here makes a lot more right so you're looking at maybe an roi of maybe two and a half months or something like that but it could if it takes a tank in the beginning of the year here and it goes down ethereum drops back down to 500 dollars and just holds for three months, four months. Now you're looking at, you're not paid off something like this until June. So you're looking at seven, potentially up to seven months. So that's why I say it's very predicated on pricing. You look for the forecast of where things are at, you baseline, you make a decision. And in this, in this space, then you hold until it makes sense to take some profits. It's no different than any other investing. You don't wanna sell when it's the lowest. And when it's hitting all time highs, it's probably a pretty good time to sell if you're trying to get out of some of it back to cash to pay off your investment. So, it's like four degree weather. You over there, you're freezing. You got your... it's, it's warm right here though. We got the heat coming out. Okay. Yeah, he's over there probably freezing as well. So, that, you know, if you're, if you're looking at trying to figure out the math behind it, you look at that total investment and you can just predicate it on do a plus or minus 30% either way of current price, right? Or you, you can go as extreme as 50%. Bitcoin, without a doubt, can move 50%. It happens. It's happened several times. But if the general trend is up, where, which is where a lot of folks that are investing in this and a lot of folks that are, that are believing in the space, predicate your, your, your lay out your, your schedule on that curve and figure out. You know, figure out where what your worst case scenario and what your best case scenario is, and then have your exit points, and usually have your exit points at least on selling on the uptrend. When the market's speculating price up and you're now hitting all time highs, it's probably a good time to sell some if you're a miner, if you're a producer, right? To get some of your investment back and then become whole on your current investment. Any other questions? Oh, we lost her. We lost our, our, our BBT Brett had to take a call. So we're uh, I'm gonna get this going right here while we're waiting, and then we'll hold your questions for a second. We'll wait for him to get back. We'll get this fired back up, and uh, we're gonna take this into Windows. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna push the secondary BIOS. We had almost every one of these cards here all show like a one. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna push the old, other BIOS on it, and then what we're gonna do on these nine cards is we're gonna go through that that troubleshooting that I do to make sure which cards are which. And I'm gonna take you guys through that. That's one of the things I wanted to do tonight on this one is we, on the first part episode, we went through just building it. And then we got it into Windows and we had some issues and then we shut that stream off because it was at four hours. Well, now we got it already built. I wanna take you guys through that second part of like, okay, I got everything working, I got the BIOS deployed, I'm having problems, how do I fix that? That's what I wanna bring you through right now. That was my parents asking how to get on the live stream. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. Uh, was that the one that was over? Oh, so I'm worried about it. 
No, use a death one because I think that one yeah, has the bad so. memory errors. As that's the other thing is when you guys go through these cycles, we'll tag it and it does it, did it have an X on it or anything on the front or did it look like it had? Yep, that's about it. Well, it's probably a good card. It's just not good for for this. So you want to get more RGG. Yeah. So we got room for one more down here. Okay. Uh, I got a couple of So we're gonna we're gonna go into Windows here, and so what I'm yes. gonna do tell them where we are using simple mode. We are using simple mining on all the rigs right now, but I configure everything in Windows. So I configure the, the BIOS, I do some testing initially in, in Windows, then I shut it down and we put it onto simple mining. So right now I'm gonna go in and we're gonna it's it's setting up cards right now. We're gonna let it do its thing and blink there for a second. And then I'm gonna get in there and I'm gonna deploy the first main BIOS that I have for these cards. I'm going to deploy it across all nine, and we're going to use... Uh, I'll zoom the camera in so you guys can see the, the script. I'm going to do a... a uh, versus doing it manually in PowerShell, I'm going to let it do automatically in PowerShell across all the cards. You guys will see that command. And it'll show you how to deploy BIOSes very quickly to multiple cards. Um, automatically versus the manual way that I was doing it in part one. So we'll let this... This is blinking. It's just setting up cards right now. So... Three hundos. Three. Hey, uh, earlier live streams. I, I, most people like the earlier live streams. Sometimes we go late. I think we went to like midnight Eastern stand or uh, midnight uh, Central Standard Time on the last live stream. We wanted to do this one a little earlier. It's still blinking. I can tell whenever it's uh. So when when you go and put new cards in this with a fresh Windows, it's got to go through and it's got to set up all the cards. Again, there's nine of these. Um, and then get that. Now, one of the questions too, I'm gonna answer questions until this thing's done. I'm going through some of the, the questions that get asked to us a lot. And a lot of people are questioning, you know, what kind of networking do you need for even like a large setup like this? I have done mining rig farms all the way up to 40, 50 total rigs. And we've done it on a standard, a pretty standard internet connection. I call in the local cable company, having their 100 meg service, their 100 meg download with like five, 10 meg upload. And that ran 40 rigs with no problems, no hiccups. We have to get a nice little managed switch. That's about $150, $200 for a uh, gigabit switch. You bring that over to a pretty decent, I, mean, I usually put a higher end router. Most of the time I go with game routers because the business class routers, I think the game routers actually perform a little better. And I'm talking like a Nighthawk 9000, uh, Asus, Asus' is higher, higher line uh, uh, routers, just because they're, they can handle all that really quick asynchronous traffic because they're used to the hype, you know, make sure pings are really low on a lot of its transfer. I go with those higher end routers on, on bigger setups. You have that plus normal internet connection and you'll work fine with 40 GPUs. This, this type of GPU setup, you're setting at like uh, um, seven, 10, between the one extra ones that he has in the back. We'll have a, a potentially up to 10 setups, a full 13 card rigs eventually. Right now we have five here and that'll work perfectly fine on a normal home internet. You're gonna, you're gonna power out before you're gonna network out on most of these type of things here. What do you got going? Making sure we have three cards. Three cards? We have one open spot down here. I guess it's the bad card. Well, there's one down here, and then you got the extra open spot there. Yeah, yeah you, all the GPUs are up? I think so. We got the, the five off the other day. Oh, because the other five are coming off of the other. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So that, just, uh, that should answer the, the question with the network. If you start getting into like hundreds of rigs and stuff, your, your a standard internet connection can still work. I would look at having maybe a little higher upload for reasons to be able to remote in and stuff. You start looking at redundant internet at that point because if you start going over 20, 30 rigs, you don't want to be reliant on one internet connection at that point. That's a huge investment. That's a huge intake of cash flow. You're going to want two different companies coming into that. That You're going to want your cable and you're going to want DSL. You're going to want bridgeable internet because you don't want any downtime at all. Because your single point of failure is your power and your single other single point of failure is your network to the internet. You need to be able to get connected to the internet. That's the way you submit shares 
two pools. So having redundant internet connection and having a redu redundant power is a little expensive. If because of the fact that you are using so much energy, having backup power generation at the scale that you would need on a mining farm is pretty significant. So that's kind of like a long pull um, because you're not, you're, whatever you buy is not going to be enough to power up all your rigs, right? You can go with a portion of rigs and not be completely down. But we get a lot of that questions, um, especially from the larger mining farms. And it's not because there's not really good engineers out there that can figure out all the math behind the power and the requirements based on the outputs and all that. It is really just the science behind it, like how much internet does it actually use, how much power, what, what's my single point of failure. So, again, another cool freebie for you guys out there for that. What risers do you recommend? Um, really, any riser. And most of the newer 6 plus generation, so like this riser here, is a version 6c it has a six pin connector this six pin connector right now you can go straight into these six pins with actual power supply we actually use because this is a lot more beefed up connection for the sata we just do not use any more than two to the sata connections per strand and this can and this setup by and large almost every one of them has one SATA to one strand to that power supply because we're going to be dual mining. So we're not putting a heavy load on that SATA because it's only one riser on one strand. So because we're using three PSUs that have four SATA connect separate connections, that's 12 cards with three PSUs. Four times three is 12. And then you have one of the risers that's going to have two connections on it. So that gives you the 13 in this setup. You could easily, if you felt, if you wanted to feel a little more comfortable, you could do a three PSU slow, you know, 850 P2, 850 G3, something like that, and then just go one riser to one SATA per cable, and then that allows you safely to do <coughs> dual mining with no problem. Um, but any of the P10, uh, P, what is it, the uh, version 006 C, uh, sevens, eights, any of them that have that six pin. And then using that, and it's just a beefier connection uh, that gives you uh, the right resonance that you need for the, the power not to burn up that, that riser. What else we got? Good? I think this is up. Now, what we're going to do is go into PowerShell. Well, actually, here, let me zoom in to this. You can square this up because you're going to have to do this. Yes. And that should be enough. And then we're going to get... So what we're going to be using first is I'm going to go and hit device manager real quick just to make sure that we don't have any excellent oh, that was disk management I'm gonna just try this again and go to device manager make sure we don't have any exclamation points all the GPUs are found that's the nine and then we're gonna go into PowerShell I'm gonna yes and then well, this time I'm gonna use an automated Card mod. That's a folder we have where we hold the mods for the cards. Mm -hmm. ATI Win Flash. And then I'm just doing the up arrow because we've done this a few times. I do the period backslash ATI slash and then space minus I. That lets us. Do, it does a query on all the cards that are in here right now. And we'll return all their device IDs and all that and let me know that everything passed fine. And then what we're going to do is go up to here. And the BIOS mod that we're going to be using is not that one. So if you look at this, it's the same command as that. Space minus PA. Then another space. And then minus PA dev ID. D-E-V ID equals. And what this is equaling is this device ID. So what this is going to say is that I want to flash every card in this machine that has that device ID at the same time. Well, it'll do it synchronously, but it's going to go right down the device ID. It's going to go to adapter 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, all the way through 8. So that's the nine cards. You start with device ID 0. 
And then we start to give it a, right when I start to type what the BIOS is, I just hit an S here and hit tab, it's gonna to start to come through here. So the one I want to put on there is the Alpida BBT only. This is the timing only, this is the first ROM of two that we use. And this is the one that I wanna put on there, I'm gonna restart the machine after that. So now I hit entered on this, it's gonna roll through each device ID automatically. I don't have to go through port one, or port zero, point one, port two, point three. It'll go through each one of them automatically by using this command here. So we're going to see it just do that real quick. We can answer some questions as that's rolling through. If they have any questions, we can ask because this is going to take probably three minutes. It takes them a second for them to... Daniel Hughes has a very specific question about his setup on the B250s. Uh, he couldn't get his 8 GPU to be detected in Windows 10. He has a mixed card. It's RX 580s, RX 470s, and 1060. Claymore's only seen the 7 He's missing the 1060? Wait, what? Well, I'm, I'm letting them see that part there. They can see. You guys can see that. I'm going to zoom in. And you can see it going through. It's on uh, adapter. One, two, three, four. It's on adapter four. <coughs> waiting, to hear, waiting to hear back from Daniel. Yeah, we're 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 probably running a thirty, at least a thirty second delay, maybe. You seem longer, about 30. Yeah. You're still pointing at the screen. Yeah, so. Right. So you can see this is a fat, much faster way if you're going to do all these GPUs. But it's not as fast as just doing that and then you're good. You have to, you'll have to do some testing after that. And we're going to do that right after this. I'm going to show you guys how we go through the iterative testing, which takes time. A setup like this, if people are wanting to know from a time-wise, you could spend up to 40 hours of physical time, billable labor time on a couple people to set up up to 60 cards if they're AMD. Just because of the iterative nature of trying to figure out to make sure that you have the right BIOSes and the right settings, if you're trying to spec out how big is a, a, a setup like this and how long is it going to take me? On AMD, it's going to take you significantly longer. It's going to be... I, I've done a few AMDs where I've had the BIOSes, everything worked fine, and it took me about 40% longer than it would a normal uh, NVIDIA, and I didn't have to do a lot of troubleshooting. But I still had to go through the activity of this to put a BIOS on it, and then I had to go mod it. You know, you know, I had to go through the modding process before I put that on there. And then everything kind of worked out and there was no issues and everything worked. If you have issues, the second you start having issues, you can start factoring that time by three and four times on length of time. Because of the iterative nature that it takes to, to test out different setups. Your four gigs, or your four, uh, your NVIDIA, cards will take like a third of the time just because essentially you put them in there we go nine nine adapters updated there we go it did all of them we can close this out we're gonna shut this down and we're gonna go straight back to simple mining and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you right out of the gate does it work or does it not work and if it doesn't, then we're going to go, we're going to drop them to one or two GPUs at a time and we'll start marking them to find the ones that are working with that BIOS or not. The ones that do not work with this BIOS, we will take those ones up separately and put the other BIOS that we worked through that we figured out that that other BIOS is the one that works with those cards. Mm -hmm. So we're going to unplug this, we shut it down and we're going to plug in Simple Mining OS with everything plugged in. 
And we're going to boot it up. And we're going to leave the screen zoomed in. Two ton. Yep. Two ton set you 20 bucks, I think. Ah. Yeah, give them. There you go. Yeah, we got. We are going to be doing a, a Vega a Vega 56 build. You guys are going to like that one. So, I know you guys have been asking for a Vega build. We're going to be doing a Vega build. Maybe T. Nick, out! Say, say thank you for $20 from two ton. Two ton like a boss with a 20 spot. Somebody That's around funny. St. Louis is looking for three to five risers. You know what locally they can go? Three to five risers? Um, the PBT stash, maybe. Uh, send us an email with you were talking to you. your address and Cavalier service. Uh, and what your requirement is and need, and we'll shoot you a message back. We may be able to, we may be able to spot you at three. BBT taking care of taking care of the fan support. Last one. If he says that. Oh wifey. <laughs> Make good fun of me. Alright, so here we see it deploying. The, the clock settings right now on all nine GPUs. And what we're looking for is 27 and a, about 27 and a third 27 and a half mega hash on this setup if we immediately have cards that fall off then we're going to shut it back down and we're going to work a couple cards at a time 27 and a half across the board which is great so these might be just perfectly fine with that bios so we're going to let this run for a second and you can see we're at 246 mega hash And before we did that, when we first booted this up last time, I had the other BIOS deployed to all of them. And again, this is nine cards running at that. And this is our optimized settings. We're running 1900 memory, and we're running 1150 on the uh, core. Are they, do they hear that? Yep. Super Shack question coming in. Um, your rigs are run Linux with simple mining. Windows were set up in test. Where and why aren't you using BBT's multi -reader? Well, on this particular setup, we're gonna since there's a larger rig setup. Repeat the question. Who? Repeat the question. Why, why aren't you using multi -miner? So there was a question that came in. People were asking, why are we not using multi miner on this particular setup with Windows? When you start dealing with multiple rigs like this, you want the simplicity of being able to manage it remotely. The simplicity to manage rigs remotely with Windows grows significantly harder. You're not on camera, by the way. Yeah, that's fine. Um, and I can zoom out because this thing looks like it's running. Um, let's zoom out. Should be all the way zoomed out. So the question was, how, why aren't we using Multiminer? is because when you're starting to talk 60 GPUs in general, five rigs, managing that with simple mining, paying $2 per rig a month, and being able to quickly on your phone be able to reboot, change clocks, monitor status, reboots, huh? I don't think you're zoomed out. I am. It's just the delay. I'm looking at it on the capture device. Oh, really? Oh, I am not. There we go. Good call. Um, being able to manage that is huge. So you want you want a simpler process to 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 handle that. So that's why we're using simple mining with this. We can deploy Electronium, we can deploy Zcash, we can deploy anything like we can with using the multi miner. Through simple mining, we just have to go in there and configure it separately. The multi miner really was a tool to get folks the ability to get into the space easily. They go out there, they get a wallet address ID, they make a change to it, and then quickly they have access to 29 different options. 
uh, different currencies. 54 if you add on all, or 59 different options if you add all the different iterative pools that we have in there. So I wanted to be able, it wanted the ability for people to be able to download that, download a wallet, have one card in their gaming machine, and then just hit one button and go, and be able to mine a particular currency. Some people ask, like, well, you know, what's the difference between NiceHash? NiceHash and any of the currencies, any of the auto switching systems, are are predicated on trying to get you the most value based on the current price at the current time for your particular setup and rig. If you're on NiceHash or something like that, you are just looks like looking at trying to maximize your output into BTC because people pay you in BTC to repoint your rig to other stuff. So it's not really a competitor to NiceHash, it's an augmentation to the space. So this on this particular setup, we wouldn't run Windows on all these, we want to be able to manage them easily. So that was the, the answer to that part. Delay is such that you're still not zoomed out on YouTube. Nice. So we're gonna let this continue to run. I'm gonna crack this open just because I see some of the temps reaching 74 Celsius. And what we'll do is we'll take you guys through, I think at this point we can take you guys through the kind of rig setup here. I'm gonna repoint this light. We have a good shot down the side of the rigs here and we'll take you guys through the setups here of what we were doing and then we'll wrap up some more questions and hopefully that kind of gets you guys going let's get this unhooked it's always interesting whenever I take the camera for a ride here All right, let's make sure this is good and hooked up. So we'll bring this over. I'll try to go slow because otherwise it'll pixelate the image. Yeah, it should be good now. So very first, I'm gonna bring you guys down to kind of a setup here that we got going on the side here. So we have this little angled aluminum bracket here that comes down and holds the backs of the cards so you can see that right right there so the cards all set up on that and a real simple solution here to hold that in place because just pivoting it with with screws here it makes this like a swing so I, I got to give credit where credit's due to the wifey she came up with the uh, little zip tie thing here just to hold that in place. There's different ways you guys can construct this. This isn't an engineering, you know, uh, and one of these things where you're like in an engineering competition. This is about, I want that card to stay in place to mine continuously to uphold the network and produce cryptocurrency. There's different ways you, in different time and different amounts of effort that you can put into this to make this more secure, more, more, uh, uh, clean looking without zip ties and stuff like this but I would say don't get caught up in that you're missing the point so it's about functionality more than it is what it looks like but make sure that it's secure and that it holds things I like having the back supported there and then on this side you guys can see and I'm probably gonna get in front of the light which is gonna throw off the view a bit but we will go into night view night vision here and you can see the double-sided tape here, holding that down. I've seen some comments on the last video. People were concerned that that would overheat and start to cause some kind of uh, adhesive dripping. This is the, the more uh, higher quality 3M tape. And additionally, this is gonna be cooled to where this doesn't get much more. It gets a little more than room temperature, but it's still gonna be fine. If you don't get proper cooling on there, yes, absolutely, you could cause some adhesive issues with that but right now that's the kind of setup as you can see all of the different gpus down here having just a lip to sit on you can see kind of down that down the setup there it's not auto focusing but you can kind of see that and then you can see the backs going all the way down there with the wiring exercise here and then you can see all the gpus right here essentially zip tied down 
in place. Does the PDU down convert to 110? The PDU does not down convert to 110. In that setup. So we've got essentially three rows of that kind of setup here. We'll take this kind of back to the back over this way. I step over the wire there and pull this back. And we can see the setup here. So essentially three three power supplies. See the networking back here. Again, this isn't all been zip tied down. This will get all zip tied down once we're done with it. And, re, and then we got a, a, a network, a normal standard network switch right here. That's got six of the connections for the, well, it's five rigs plus an extra if we need to bring it over. And that is ran from a wire that's going over to the router. And then two of the 30 amp outlets right back here. And the PDUs on the back, you can see each of the banks there's three banks on the back that are 8 amp 240. There's equivalent to 16, 16 amp 110. And we got two 1600 watt, well, there would be two 850s into each of those different 8 amp banks. That's the way we got this set up. And we got multiple PDUs here. Got one down there and then one right down here. So those are the two PDUs for this setup. This really maxes out this setup is the five rigs. If we want to put more rigs over here, we have to run another, we'll have to run another 30 amp connection. Oh my God, that's cold. You freezing over there? Yeah. I'll pull a close. Yeah, that nine degree weather in here. John Williams took 10 euros. He's asking, uh, Just dropped him down to 52. No uh, so yes, we will do core old and revolting on it. Uh, right now, I'm trying to make sure that they're stable with this. We were running 990 and 990 both on memory and core clock on the undervolting on them. I, I want to make sure that they're fully stable the way they are right now. We'll do core, core undervolting with them right after that, and then we'll move them to dual mining to make sure that they can dual mine with core undervolting. Why no monitor PDUs? Why? monitored PDUs. Yeah, I mean the different one. So it came down to a cost a cost differential. I mean like these <laughs> trip repeat, light repeat the question. So one of the questions was is why did not we why didn't we go with monitored PDUs? And these ones are the trip light uh there's very standard trip light uh PDUs. These things were pretty significantly cheaper, right? Than yes. We were looking at them. I mean there was about a hundred dollar cost difference per PDU to have it monitored or not monitored. And really, we already knew the benchmarking on what, how much power output we needed. So having having the PDU is just more of a, a functional, a functional requirement. Not no, not necessarily that we needed to go with. And I'll bring it down here. We'll go back into night vision here, and you can see the extra banks that we have here for the the others. And those are single 12, 12 amps. If you if you wanted to go with the larger, uh, I think those are the C15 connections. Our CF15s, C15s. And we're using the NEMA C13s to C14 connections. We have the actual uh, the actual connectors down in the description if you guys wanted to know the differences. And then you can kind of see the kind of setup we got going on down here with this. With each one. And like we said, the power connections on on each setup here is for each PSU. We got three of them. Each of the cards are coming out of the SATA into one of the SATA connectors. So each of these P, uh, these uh, power supplies between and, and a lot of this because we had extra, but if the standard 850p2 has three separate connectors for SATA, so three separate strands. So you could go and, and then you can get a fourth one if you have a whole bunch of extra power supplies like we do, or if you buy extras, you can get an extra fourth SATA connector to put into each of the PDUs and then go one 
SATA connector per GPU besides one besides the 13th one you'll have to use two two of the the SATA connectors on onto the the actual SATA powered connectors which you'll see right there like that right there so that gives you more than enough protection on the overhead if you're going to do dual mining which uses more uh, ha puts a heavier power requirement on the actual riser So that's the kind of setup that we got going on there with all these again 23 across the top had the door closed for a little bit we're up to 65 about 50 percent fan speed this is the setup that we're running right here now this will heat up and this will get up to 80 80 celsius without having any kind of uh ventilation so we'll be having the door partially cracked until we get a a fan put up here and to be able to exit the exhaust out a couple comments about melting tape melting tape yeah as long as we keep it just over room temperature we should be fine if we if you start getting into the like where the, the tape's getting into like 90 degrees fahrenheit you're going to start causing some issues with regards to the adhesive starting to come off of it david j said what's the anticipated mh Uh, the mega hash on this is uh, 100 or 1.9 giga hash, almost two giga hash. With this whole setup, 65 cards. We're at an hour 20. Yeah, we're gonna wrap it up here. Uh, hour and 30, we'll wrap it all the way up. So we'll we'll take some questions. We're gonna close it off at an hour and 30, guys. Again, kind of recap. If you're going to do a build like this, you're going to want to make sure that you plan the time. It's all about cost, schedule, and expected performance. It's your delivery. It's just like any kind of uh, project management kind of thing. So what's your cost? Everybody does the cost. That's the easy part, right? You build the spreadsheet, you buy the equipment, you figure that out. What's your schedule? How long, when are you going to do it? You got to make sure you have the time scheduled for it. This is a this kind of setup is a week setup like a full week, like one, like set yourself a schedule for five days because it's going to be a lot of iterative process if you're using AMD cards. And the, the if we were, if we were to, if I was going to have to fix some of these cards because I was having issues, I would literally unplug every one of them. I'd plug in one and then I would mark the little corner with a little, a little uh, uh, dry erase marker. You're, you, you color, just put a little green tag that card and say that card's good and it runs good. Shut it down, plug in another card. Unplug that one, plug in another card. It literally is that anal retentive to go through it, that entire process. They've requested the gun. They've requested the thermal, the thermal imaging. Let's see here. Let's get this set up here. What's your, uh, what's the rate? What's the range on that? You have to modify the range. Oh, no, the range is set, right? See the heat on top is it's definitely hotter on top. 116 on the hot spot. Surface 121. 22. Just took a picture there. Not too bad. This is in Fahrenheit right now. 139. So that's right on that. That's right on the edge of the VRM. 151, 150. That's on the back side of that top card. I'm trying to get it to, there it goes, 158. That's right on the back part of the processor on that, that top right card. But if you're looking at like the rack itself, 80 degrees, 90 degrees ambient. That side's a lot cooler because there's nothing on over there. 72 73 so you can see the top the tops kick all the heat heat rises so yeah that top part is a little warm so that's on the back side here on the chipset and then the actual surface temperature here pretty warm i mean it's about 
about 120 degrees right there on that on that surface. It's like touching a hot car, like on the summer. Um, so it'd be cool to watch it on the floor if you open the door and watch it cool down. Yeah, here we go. Doors open. That's a good. That's a good idea. Get this chart. 120, 130. That's the hot spot. It's already cooled down 20 degrees. We're in the 90s. You're watching it in real time. 91, 94, 90. 104. That's the hot spot. trying to hold it in one spot there's the hot spot so 120 so one when I saw 140 there I'm trying to keep it in one the same spot oh floor turned off what do you think about running a rig in the garage in the St. Louis area uh, I, I'm always skeptical about running things in the garages because there's when you have that much heat and there's a lot of critters in the Midwest. 150 on that back VRM still. The surface temperature of the the actual case though, it's a lot cooler down here in the bottom. And you can see the how many the lamps. mining cars can you put on the B250, and can they be 1080 Ti? That's the outside temp. Eight degrees. Yeah, so outside temperature is eight point four Fahrenheit. That inside wall is sixty. The racks ninety. Oh, turned off. Again. What was that? How many non-mining cars can you put on the B250? Can they be 1080 Ti's? You can put up to 13 cards on the. Um, <coughs> we have a box. There's another box right here. So, on this B250 mining expert board, you have thir you have 19 slots. You can put 13 GPUs of any type on there. It could be 13 1080 Ti's. If you wanted to run all 19, you need to have eight P106. I have not confirmed the P104s. I'm going to take an assumption that the P104s work, but until we try it, it's eight P106s. It's essentially these first eight over here, and the rest, the 11, can be any other card. That will give you 19. If you watch some of our prior videos, we got 21 on that. There was one test I was going to try, and I did not... Um, you know, we can really quickly test this before we lock this down. We were going to see if this thing posts with more than 13 because of the new BIOS. So let's do that real quick before we wrap this one up. Let's do that with the door closed. Let's do that with the door closed. You can keep Brett's freezing out here. It's only 10 degrees outside, folks. All right, let's do... See how are we gonna we put this? a we can put a one of the other five seventies on and get real risky. Well, I mean it's either gonna post or it's not. So what I can do is let's take uh, we have an extra yeah we have this one this one this one was just flaky like it would cause a, it would fall out. Do we have a riser? Let's get it. Yeah, it's this. So if we take this top rig, so Asus did do a BIOS update. Let's add in the 
simple mining install. Well, this had this only had thirteen because this has a car that's down. Um, the simple mining install the GPU drivers also. The simple mining what? Install the GPU drivers also. Um. Yes, it does all the it does all the uh, driver installs for you. Keith Christopher says it won't post. I already tried on mine. Oh, you saved us the time then. It would be difficult right now for me to do that because we have the perfect amount of GPU um, eight pins, and I'm gonna, I would have to do something specific. Brad Sylvester said also tried, hey. don't post. Yeah, tried it, don't post. So there, there. We'll we'll take their word for it right now. I will try it in the post video that we do with the episode and just prove that. But uh, it's either a hard lock on the motherboard that they have set in there, or it literally is a resource issue. And the P106s, I don't think this is the case. I'm just going to tell you full disclosure. I think that it's a lock on on Asus's part because the input outputs. Even if there was less IRQ requirements and less resource requirements on the mining card because it doesn't have the VGA and the DVI and the HDMI, then the RX 470 mining edition cards that we've tried with this should do the same thing as the P106s and it doesn't. So the, the RX 470 mining cards, which does not have input outputs on it also, does not supplement for the P106s. So I think it's an ASUS hard requirement for whatever reason, if they have some kind of an agreement with NVIDIA, I don't know. They've never came full disclosure on that, but there is an engineer in this world that knows that answer and we have yet to find him. So I've asked some questions on it. I don't have a lot of good contacts with NVIDIA and most of the folks that any of the reviewers or anybody ever interacts with is usually the marketing or the sales executives or those folks in this industry anyways, like if we went to a CES, like a consumer electronics show or any of that, we're not gonna find the engineers. They rarely come to those type of events. They, they don't come outside. They don't come outside. So if you are a person that works for ASUS or knows somebody that works for ASUS, how many people are on this channel right now? 290. 290. 290 individuals have one to many connections to people that know people. So if you're in this channel and you know somebody that might know somebody, Seven degrees of separation gives that. Uh, let's do some quick Somebody math. There's right about four thousand individuals, four to ten thousand individuals between all of us that are watching this that may know somebody that knows somebody at ASUS that knows an engineer that can answer this damn question and tell them to email bisbetriven at gmail.com and we'll explain it mechanically to people if we need to. There was a man on here earlier whose wife worked for MSI. Yeah. So somebody knows the rationale and it could be hey man we made some backdoor agreement with nvidia and i'm sorry i'm okay with that whatever dude you it's your business you guys can do whatever you want just come full disclosure of why we can't put other mining cards on this thing and get to 19. if it's going to be sold and marketed to hold 19 i would like to have 19 regular cards uh, mario is considering buying 56 1063 games for about 10,000 euros. Do you think they can handle mining for a long time? He's not talking about ETH because of the DAG, but overall. Absolutely. 1063 gigs Repeat. will run perfectly fine. Repeat. So the, the question that's out there, good call. The question out there was, if a person was gonna make a large investment of 1063 gig cards, is it worth it in not and excluding the fact that ETH with a DAG file on a year, is it still a good investment? Absolutely, from a perspective of a very cost alternative right now in mining. You're gonna see a lot of people that are gonna challenge and say, well, Volt is around the corner. It's about getting into the space and getting your investment, getting that platform set up. Right now, Volta and any of that, to say that if you were able to get a card, when it comes out, then maybe Volta or some other option might be a better solution, maybe four or five months from now. If you were to wait out and hold out back in the R RX, 475, 480s, 580s, 570s, and say, well, Vega's around the corner. How many Vega cards are out there? Hardly anybody can get them. I'm, we're gonna do a mining build with three RX Vega 56s because they are like nearly impossible to find. So if Volta's not gonna have a ramped up, who knows? So right now, 1063 gigs will more than meet the mark, 24.5 mega hash, if you get the Hynix memory, I'm sorry, Hynix memory uh, is out there and does not perform very well when it comes to ETH 
or any kind of uh, you know Ethereum based kind of coin, but it does fine with uh, the uh, Zcash. Do you ever find any GPUs that fit in that Roswell? The Roswell. Uh, we're we're gonna do a follow up to that build. I want to give you guys more of a close the Roswell uh, B. Well, you said that the Roswell. Don't repeat the question. Oh Jesus. I'm getting some support here, and they're trying to make sure I'm. Not. So somebody was asking, from your wife too. huh? I'm getting the same text from your wife. Repeat the question. Repeat the question. I need to get you guys mics. <laughs> I have her. I do have a new mic, so she can start talking. So the uh, question was B two fit our B six hundred Roswell case. The current cards that we have done the previous episode on does not fit fully in the case. We just have it open top up. Um, we are not we have not put any other cards in there it's got the 1070 ti's in there and right now it's working great but uh we're going to do a follow-up to that build with those cards doing one kind of final uh re relook at that we're going to tear that build down let you guys see how that came together and then bring that to you so no we have not put any other different cards in that a few more questions and we'll wrap it up daniel hughes is uh still wondering about his mixed rig eight cards not get an eighth card detected only seven. He says it doesn't matter which card it is. On what the B two fifty? What motherboard? If it's an Asus Prime Z two seventy and he's using the M two adapters, you got to make sure in the BIOS that it has the M two adapter set to PCI Express, um, not that that it's a B, PCI B250. Express. B250. Try not to use the 16 pin or the 16 slot. Do use any slot besides that. Plug in all your cards. That it? Damn, life is good using an i3700K as a CPU. <laughs> oh, somebody was saying that? Yeah, we, that's why we go with the i 3 7100s guy. I mean, you can go with the Celerons and the cheaper ones, but having that extra throttling up to almost 4 gigahertz when you're doing stuff, it's just it's worth it, especially if you're using Windows. If you're going to use Linux, you can get by with a lot lesser processor. 66 or 4400, G4400, Pentium work great. The Celeron variants work fine in, in Linux, but if you're using Windows, you're going to love the i3-7100. All right, last question. Mohammed is wondering if he has 19 GTX Titan 5s. Is it good for dual mining? Nah. How many? 19. 19 Titan 5s? Mohammed Ganaba. Mohammed, you spent a lot of money, bro. And you have what would be considered probably one of the premier supercomputers on AI, probably now, too, with 19 of those. 640 tens for cores per. That's some cheddar. I mean, that's 6,400 tensor cores for 10 of them. That's almost 12,800 tensor cores. I think that you could probably create a small uh, Google AI with that. Um, so dual mining, if you're running to try to dual mining, you could try to dual mine with library credits. Library credits does pretty good with NVIDIA cards. But other than that, not really much. Uh, you could try also Pascal coin, I think does pretty well with that too. Decred and Sia, not so much, um, but it, it still wasn't too bad. I mean, that, that's a pretty crazy, uh, that car is pretty next level, so. All right, last question for real. Last question for do, real. Do B250 Pro boards now run 12 with the same card after the Windows update? B250 Pro boards now run 12 with the same card after the Windows update? Yes. You can run any set of ranged or same cards on both NVIDIA or on AMD cards in Windows with the 1709 uh, Fall Creator update and then recommend the high, the largest driver or the latest driver for NVIDIA or AMD on both of those. How can you dual mine in uh, simple mining? In simple mining to dual mine, you just choose one of the Claymore options. So the Claymore 10 V10.2 uh, right now is the current one, and you need both sets of syntax on that that actual syntax line. So the first one's going to be the first thing you're mining, which is going to be Ethereum or Expanse or uh, Ubik. Um, so any of the uh, the Ethereum-based kind of blockchain uh, systems. So that's why I say Ubik, Expanse, Ethereum. 
on the first set and on the second set under slash D pool. There's a lot of different syntax out there. Go to go to Claymore's main um, thread on bitcoin.talk.org and on that first page, if you scroll down through all the options, you'll see example text of what you need to be able to dual mine with. So you can copy that text in there, change it to your dimensions of your wallet, such as Decred or Siacoin or all that, and then you just put that line in simple mining as such. It has to be exact syntax. If you look through a couple of our other videos and go through, look at some of the timestamps, we have done that before. On the Multiminer uh, 5.6, I believe I show people how that kind of works in both. Um, and you can do it in that way too. So you just need to have both sets in the same line. Is that it, we're gonna wrap it up. Uh, what's your opinion on the uh, eight card Zotac GTX 1070 Ti and Extreme Edition 8 gig for mining? 1070 Ti, Amped, Amped Extreme. Extreme. Yeah, we did a video on the Amped Extreme and the Amped, the Amped and the Amped Extreme the amped are perfectly fine. The 1080 Ti's in general, it doesn't matter if it's the cheapest. I, I say go with the cheapest one you can find. All of them have the same base clocks. Some overclock a little better than others because of what they are. Some also will cool a little better than others. But all of them run very well at power limit of 70 and cranking them up to at least 500 on the memory. And you're going to do very well on any of the 1070 Ti's that you get. So I look at the 1070 Ti minis are really good too. And we have videos on it, guys. You guys can check the video out on the Amptic stream. So it's just not me telling you. You can go out there and see it perform. Cool. Well, so we're gonna wrap this one up. Hopefully this provided you guys some more insight in some of the troubleshooting that you needed to do with this kind of setup. We didn't get into a total troubleshooting because this one kind of worked. But like I said, go and drop into one single individual card at a time after you post the BIOS, you load the BIOS on everything. You, have, you can go into simple mining and test one card at a time, make sure it doesn't fall off. Find the cards that have the issue, pull those off to the side, make yourself have a good rig with all the, all the cards, take all those extra cards and you'll load that second BIOS if it's the Sapphire Pulses. We'll include both BIOSes in this video below. We'll add them to the other video too that'll make it work for both of these cards. If you're having problems with one BIOS, just put the other BIOS on there and you should be good to go with the 1900 clocks and the 1150 memory. And this one, I'll wrap this one up. Stay are gonna, tuned. Are you going to post this straight to YouTube? So they want to know if the time's going to start time stamping. Yes, we will post this straight to YouTube right after this. So you'll see it process, and I think we'll be good to go. Good? Cool. We'll wrap this one up. Thanks, guys, for the super chats, and we'll catch you on the next one.